Hey, welcome to Root Family Podcast, where we can draw families closer to God by going deeper in what he's really saying in his scriptures, in and through us. Welcome to another Root Family Podcast. I'm so excited that you're joining me here today, and I'm really excited about today's topic, angels. In Root Bible Academy this week, we dove into angels. We started with the story, the historical event, rather, of Jesus' birth and how often angels showed up in there. And a lot of times, uh, at least for, for our kids, they think that's really the extent of angels' activity in the Bible is only when it has to do with a uh, massive thing like Jesus' birth. Uh, but really, we see angels showing up all over in the Bible. It's really a fun, fun research project you can have, especially your older kids. Just research, hey, where do you see angels in the Bible? And they're going to learn so much. It's really, really intriguing how often they show up and not just see why the, or see the events around what they when they show up, but really dive into, okay, what are they saying? What can we glean from this? But that's not what we're talking about today. So you guys are getting me going down the wrong direction already. Thank you. <laughs> so can kids see angels? It's a big topic, and we're going to, I'm going to try punch through this uh, quickly for additional research. There's lots of places you can go online, but I want to suggest making sure they're Christian. There's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions on what about angels, and they're not all Christian. So make sure you're very, um, you do your research first. Let's say it that way. So make sure they're a Christian place. Also, um, I would suggest making sure that they are not just sharing opinion, but they're giving a lot of biblical um, references, a lot of biblical references for these things, because I don't want to hear what man's opinion is. I want to see how God has set this whole thing up and our position in, in authority over or under angels. Fun fact. Well, the verse in the Old Testament talks about we were given the position a little lower than the angels. The word angels there is actually in Hebrew is the word Elohim, which all throughout the rest of the Bible is translated God. But the, the translators of the Bible really struggled, I would assume, I would probably too, with writing that we were made just a little lower than God himself. And so they uh, they wrapped it into heavenly beings or, or uh, some versions say angels. So I think that's pretty crazy. Total side note. I'm sorry about that. So can kids see angels? Well, here's what I know. One of the gifts of the Spirit mentioned in, in Paul's writings is discerning of spirits. You know, the gift of wisdom, gift of uh, knowledge, the, or word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, gift of faith, gifts of healings are all in there. But I love that the, one of them is discerning of spirits. And another verse in Romans chapter 11 says, God's gifts and callings are without repentance or cannot be revoked. It's something that was given to you before you were born and you cannot um, lose that designation on your life to have or to move in these things. And if that's true, then kids have to be able to discern spirits if they have that gift of discerning of spirits, right? It just makes sense. We also know that there's no junior Holy Spirit. If you go through the Bible, there is so little that is actually waiting on natural age because so many things in the supernatural realm, our spirit realm, the spirits, the real us, eternal beings. And so we're outside of this natural environment, time, all that kind of stuff for the most, sorry, <laughs> for the most part. And so if our spirits are eternal, if God is eternal, if the gifts and callings from all that we can tell are eternal, at least 
at least therefore our entire lifetime here on earth, then it would have to be that kids can see angels. And I would actually dare to say, now I don't have biblical proof on this. Now we're going into opinion, okay? So you can take that with a grain of salt. But I would, I would, I would assume that uh, kids, especially really young kids, since they just came from the Father, and there's verses talking about that, uh, and that they're eternal beings and they're just beginning their natural life here on earth, that there would obviously be more sensitive to the supernatural realm than the spirit realm. I can, I think I can see that in my own kids. Medical science says they're just, they're just uh, staring off and talking, and uh, babies are just staring off and talking in in a direction and giggling and laughing and interacting with an unknown thing over there because they, they don't know where you are and and they're uh, they're not really all there yet, and so they're just you know exercising their their vocal abilities and just happen to be staring at it in a direction i actually think not i think medical science knows some i don't think they have the uh i don't think they have any parameters to really measure supernatural things just like with long life right total side note again i'm so sorry for all these tangents but i gotta share this with me i heard andrew womack share this so i'm i'm telling you something that's been recycled from andrew womack but he was talking about uh science has no way to measure uh the spiritual ramifications even when it comes to long life he was talking about that uh they they say eating right and um a diet and exercise is the key to having a long life. And so you see so many people really striving towards that. I'm not saying not to strive towards eating right and exercising. Those are valuable. But what does the Bible say? How do we get long life? Honoring our parents. Where do you see uh, people live the longest? If you look in the world, the places that have the highest regard for honoring their elders have the longest life. Can science measure that? No, no. Would they even try? I don't even know if they would. But uh, like Andrew Womack, he says he, from his studies and whatever, that eating right, exercise accounts for 25% of of our longevity. The rest of it is based on biblical um, or supernatural, spiritual ramifications of the choices that we make. So, long life. Same thing with angels. Just because we can't see them, just because science can't study them, doesn't mean they're not in operation. Look at how uh, they reacted in the New Testament. This is, uh, this is after Jesus had died, rose from the dead. Paul was in prison. The church is praying for Paul to be released. An angel shows up. You can check out this story in Acts. All these supernatural things to get Paul out. Paul goes to the house where everyone's praying, knocks on the door. And uh, the, the servant girl sees who it is, runs back and says, Paul is here. And, and their first reaction was, oh no, that's just Paul's angel. As in, it was normal to have people's angels show up. So, second point, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up real fast. I'm sorry, this is taking way longer. Second point, do we have guardian angels? There's actually no biblical evidence that I can see of having a guardian angel. One angel that's just assigned to you. There are spots in the Bible where it says that uh, the, they are a ministering spirit for those who will receive salvation. Uh, there's spots where it says that angels will guard over you. Uh, like, or Sorry, where that's more referencing Jesus, actually, where it says that. But they are warriors. They are acting on God's word. We do see that. We do see some are messengers. That's actually defined by the Bible. But what, what is the main thing that we see? The angels are waiting 
for the word of God to be spoken and released so that they can bring it about and bring God's will about on the earth. That's one of the big things that is one of their responsibilities is to empower God's word here on earth. And so, okay, so what do we do with this? What do we do with knowing that our kids might be seeing angels? And it might not even be a guardian angel, maybe a multitude angel, could be an angel passing by. We don't know. I, I can't say. What do we do with that? Well, we leave space for them to experience something that we're not and even cultivate something that we're not. How do you do that? Welcome to the life of being a pastor right there. <laughs> cultivating and helping people expand giftings that you don't have. This is going to stretch your leadership abilities and it is beautiful. This is where you're going to grow in your ability to depend and hear the Holy Spirit, depend on rather. He knows how to guide your kids. You just have to stop and ask him and it may be as simple as um, switching your verbiage slightly to allow the kids to develop this gift. What do I mean by that? So your, your kids come in and they say, um, there was um, gro glowing red eyes outside my window. Let's say that one, that's totally random, but let's say that. Glowing red eyes and it, and it made me feel scared. Instead of just reacting and saying, oh, that's silly, there was no glowing red eyes, you're just being fearful, you're just being silly, just go back to bed. Instead, rephrase, rephrase that, remember like what Samuel does, um, where or, uh, Eli does with Samuel. Well, maybe you're hearing something that I'm not hearing. It's the same thing. Maybe you're seeing something that I'm not seeing, but you know what? We have authority over demons. The Bible says that he has given... Uh, he's put all things under his feet. And guess what? If we're in the body of Christ, even if we're the lowest, smallest part of his body, they're under us. They're under God's authority in us. And so if you see that, you just command that to go in Jesus' name and it has to obey. What did I do there? I took a couple extra seconds other than just saying, that's not real, go back to bed couple of real seconds, but open the door for them to be able to expand that gift, whether we're seeing it or not. And then pray, Holy Spirit, give me direction. Is there something that's causing this? Is this from a movie that we watched or a show that the kids saw? And he, he'll give you direction. And maybe he'll say, hey, this is, uh, they're seeing this and, da -da -da, and you, this is how you can train them. That'd be awesome. I want to get so much better at training my kids into their callings and giftings and if it's not one that i have it doesn't mean it's wrong it doesn't mean i have to experience it in its fullness before my kids can no it just it means another way that i can depend on the holy spirit to expand my kids gifts prepare them for the things that god has created them to be because he didn't give them this gift without purpose teach them begin to teach them how to pray how to use their authority how to command uh, with the authority of God into this world to make things happen. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Teach your kids how to do that. If they're starting to see the negative things, if they're seeing the positive things, what do you see in the Bible? They're either warriors or messengers are the two options that we see listed in the Bible. I'm not saying those are the only things, but if there's an angel showing up, ask them to ask God to show them why they're there. If they're a message, you see in Joseph's life, and and you see uh, with Joseph, Mary, and Joseph, the kind of stepfather of Jesus, you could almost say. I don't know how you would describe that. Anyway, Joseph, angels show up in his dreams. And so if your kids are coming and saying, hey, I had a dream about it, this angel came and they said this, don't discount it. Don't say, oh, that's just a funny dream. Isn't that fun? To, want to be cool to see angels in heaven? Maybe your kids have that gift of discerning of spirits. And that's how these angels are going to show up. It actually shows, says multiple times that angels showed up to Joseph in dreams. So God uses our dream life as well to give, to send angels, to give us messages, to prepare us for the things that are coming up. So don't let your kids even discount their dreams. Anyway, that is it for me. 
if you want more information on this, I would say there's there's a couple books by Joshua Mills. He says he has grown up seeing in the spirit. Some of it is really hard for me to comprehend and uh, mentally assent to, but I haven't been able to find anything that really goes against the Bible. Now, if you have, I'm sorry if I've misled you in any way, but I haven't myself seen anything that goes against what the Bible says in what he is sharing. And so I'm not going to automatically discount it. I can't, there's a whole lot of the supernatural world that I can't find natural proofs to or mentally uh, uh, comprehend, figure out. It's not common sense. I mean, look at how many times in the Bible God says, what did you see? And he says, I saw a boiling, boil, boiling pot pointed from the north. And he's like, yes, this is, and then it's totally different. His definite, God's definition of what he saw and the actual interpretation never would have figured that out. <laughs> you know, and so there's so many things in the supernatural world we just have to take by faith. And so the long point of this short podcast, don't, uh, don't discount the possibility that your kids could be seen in the spiritual realm, in the supernatural realm. And it doesn't have to be a scary thing because God has given us authority over the enemy's cohorts and the uh, other ones are on our side. They're helping to, like it says in the verse, that uh, to assist those who will receive salvation. So they're there to assist or to bring a message or to war against the enemy on your behalf. And so... It is actually pretty cool. All right, that is it for me. If you want to find more information or you want your kids to jump into the class where we just taught about angels, the li the recording of the live classes is already out on the website, so you just have to enroll them in Root Bible Academy, and they could watch how, how we learned a whole lot from looking at Elizabeth and Zechariah and, and John the Baptist life. This week is all on angels. We're going to continue going through the reality, the biblical reality, and things we can learn from the historical event of Jesus' birth with the kids as we uncover the real truth. And it's been a lot of fun. The kids are eating it up. So I would really suggest getting your kids plugged into that. These podcasts pair with that so well. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>